manner of now I must bow. It was like you cannot stand in the presence of such spirituality. It was a natural, uh, very just not possible to stand in his presence. And then at the same time, feeling all these contradictions and looking at Shiva Prabhupada, he looks so small, and yet he looks so large. He looks so brave, and yet he looks so joyful. He looked so scary. It's a wonderful description of meeting Shiva Prabhupada. Um, I think I, I would have been totally satisfied in seeing Shiva Prabhupada in you know, the few times I saw him in America. And would have just relished those times my whole life, but it's really seeing Prabhupada here in India that was the most impactful in my life because there was a completely different mood. In America, it was like he, the, the women especially were at a distance. And the first time that I came to my airport, there was nothing here except Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita. Even the retaining wall wasn't there. Nothing was there but Bhagavad Gita and a hand water pump. And since we were supposed to stay for some time, I was wondering where we were going to stay. But I was told, don't worry, the tents are coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the filthy dirty tents arrived <laughs> with the holes, you know, and um, the ground was a little muddy, and so straw was brought to put up in for the tents. And my husband is, it's nice to be with you all, have my god sisters and all of you here in Sri Dhammarapur. I just want to say with Malati sharing that uh, story that, um, Her dedication um, to Srila Prabhupada has always inspired me. And for her to to catch that and not, you know, that to, to see that that was something in her that Prabhupada was kindly pointing out um, speaks volumes of who she is and what a great devotee she was then and has pulled back. And also coupled with uh, Mama Maya's mention of New York, um, which is one of the dearest places to me in the Supreme Prabhupada place. Um, I, I should say that I met Srila Prabhupada before I saw him. And that is through, the, um, through his books. Uh, prior to coming to Krishna Consciousness, I was a, a clerk typist at the United Nations in New York. Where I was, I'm from Canada. <laughs> Everything's been about the U.S. I think it was. I, I joined the temple in 1972 in Toronto, and uh, Shila Prabhupada came to Toronto in it was 75, the first time, and we had a little rented house in a kind of rundown part of Toronto, um, and there were about 80 of us in this little house. Each room would have 15, 18 devotees um, staying in each room. So that at night time, if you tried to roll over, you'd get lots of protests. And, Prabhu, Prabhu, Prabhu. <laughs> and the devotees that had special needs got to be near the window, like the pregnant ladies. <laughs> at that same time, um, when Prabhu was coming, that first time in 75, when the temple was in Gerard Street, um, I just received second initiation a few months before that. And uh, our God Shri Priya, who actually was doing a lot of service then. And uh, anyway, I won't go into it. <laughs> she, she just, she just, um, she just was diagnosed with terminal cancer. And all the devotees were praying. And, uh, she's been not so involved in temple directly for quite a few years. But she started coming when she was diagnosed. She started coming to the temple every Sunday. And um, I was at a Jaffa retreat. And um, there were a couple of doors, Bhadda Priya and Madonna and the was having a very tough depression. And um, about 3,000 dollars to travel on a ship from Australia to London. 